tokens. All right, tokens are basically condition stim or, um, condition reinforcers. Right, uh, you earn all of these crazy tokens, and they don't mean anything until you turn them in for something. Right, so you got the first couple of pictures there, the actual tokens that you might earn, and then you exchange those for the backup reinforcer. Right? Uh, the nice thing about uh, token economies. Uh, or token systems, whatever you want to say. The, the nice thing about those is that the token can be delivered very fast. Okay, so it becomes a, a very powerful reinforcer. Um, it's delivered immediate, and then we know that that's a good thing with reinforcement. And then later on, you exchange that for backup reinforcer. As you can see, they're pencils or little toys or whatever it may be. So, um, and we're going to talk a lot about token economies later and about how would you schedule them, you know, schedule payouts and things like that. But there's all sorts of stuff that's related to this, but it all works up this principle of condition reinforcement. <laughs> this one's pretty self-explanatory, right? So make sure that the backup reinforcer is actually a reinforcer. But um, so again, there's another thing that I'm kind of hemming and hawing about here. I haven't told you the whole story. The whole story is, let me I'll give you, I'll fill you in, right? So the rest of the story here is that you've got a condition, re, you know, got those unconditioned reinforcers, right? Food, sex, water. Okay? Um, and then those get paired with something. And that something, that other that neutral stimulus becomes a, a, a conditioned reinforcer. You can also take that new conditioned reinforcer and pair it with another neutral stimulus and then get a, another conditioned reinforcer. It's called higher order conditioning. We do get that all the time with reinforcement. So there can be multiple levels of that. How many levels is still under question, but um, you can get at least two levels and possibly three, you know, uh, de depending on the research that you're referring to in the lab. Um, so when I talk about the making sure the backup reinforcer is actually a reinforcer, you have to keep in mind that we're also talking about the secondary and tertiary level of reinforcement, right? So uh, degrees away from that primary reinforcer. So was it just that first degree away? That's your second. That's your uh, condition reinforcement. Was it a was it a second degree away? Was it something that was paired with a condition reinforcer? Well, that in itself is a, a secondary, you know, a higher order or secondary. Con uh, a secondary reinforcer, and then you've got the tertiary stuff. So the idea is that you need to make sure that whatever you're pairing this with is actually a reinforcer in order to develop a new one. And you don't know that until behavior changes. So you know the food is always a good one to use um, because it's a it's a, one of those unconditioned ones. It's for everybody. So as long as you deprive the person of food for a little while, make them a little bit hungry, then it's going to be a reinforcer. So that's a good one. Uh, money is generally speaking a pretty good reinforcer. Not for everybody though. Some learners that have uh, disabilities they haven't learned the value of money. They haven't learned it, that you can exchange it and things like that. So that's one that uh, you might want to think about as well. So. As you might have guessed, food is not a reinforcer to a satiated organism. If you're full, then it's not generally going to be a reinforcer. Okay. We like to think about using multiple backup reinforcers rather than just pairing it with one thing. That conditioned reinforcer, rather than just pairing it with one other source of reinforcement, pair it with multiples, and then it becomes a generalized reinforcer. It connects to many things. So money is the classic example of a, a generalized reinforcer. It's it connects to everything. You know, so it's a really powerful one. Um, here in a little bit, we're going to talk about intermittent reinforcement. It's still the best um, in terms of backup reinforcement. Um, we'll talk about schedules of reinforcement, and you may have already read that in your book, so we'll, we'll just come back to that here in a little bit. Don't let the condition reinforcer extinguish. <laughs> in other words, make sure you still pair that condition reinforcer with those backup reinforcers on occasion. You can't just let it, you, you can't just use it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and expect it to be valuable. Okay? Uh, that, it's going to lose its value. Eventually, you're going to have to pair it with other with with that with that backup reinforcer. So this is what we talk about the kind of the point before, saying that um, intermittent reinforcement is still best in terms of the backup reinforcement. So every now and again, you need to drop in that backup reinforcer, make sure those things get paired. That's like the clicker stuff, right? So the clicker itself will lose its value. It won't mean food um, after after a certain amount of time unless you keep on occasion pairing it with that uh, with with the food. So it's it's about maintaining the strength of that condition reinforcer. As you might expect, there's problems, right? Uh, make sure that the condition reinforcer actually leads to a backup reinforcer. If it doesn't, it's going to extinguish and it's going to it's going to lose its effectiveness. This is probably one of the more common things you're going to run into out in the field in terms of application of this stuff because people go, oh, that was reinforcing behavior. I'm going to keep using that, and maybe it's something like the words "good job," right? That's going to lose its effectiveness over time. Right? Um, unless you pair that with something else. Okay. 
Okay, so you still need to pair to do this other stuff. Okay. Punishment, believe it or not, when we talk about reducing behavior, has the same issue. Um, threats and things like that is what we're going to refer to here. Okay, the extinction problem that we talked about, make sure that you use effective backup reinforcers. If those re backup reinforcers are not really reinforcers, uh, then you're going to end up extinguishing uh, the effects of the conditioned reinforcer. It gets a little awkward to talk about, but the, the conditioned reinforcer is no longer going to be a reinforcer unless you uh, pair it with backup reinforcers once in a while.